Howdy, everybody. Uh, Tyler Hernandez, uh, senior news reporter at the University Star here. Uh, welcome to the first episode of the Undertow podcast, where I'm going to be talking to uh, Kayla Gregory from Healthy Cats, a student organization here on campus. So uh, hope you enjoy it. Thanks for listening. Okay, we got Kayla from yes. Healthy Cats. Mm -hmm. Thanks for coming out. Thank you for having me. Uh, all the way over from the health building? Yes. Which we were all the way. All the way, a whole lot. <laughs> you got to get your exercise in coming over from. Like we were just saying, it's over by the, the parking garage and those dorms over there like that. Yeah, so if you go like right outside of LBJ, past Jackson, you'll find it right there across the street. And that's where you guys hold all your meetings and stuff like that? Mm -hmm. On the second floor. Every week or bi-weekly? Yeah, so it's every week on Tuesdays at 5 p.m. You usually have speakers or you do focus on presentation type stuff? Yeah, so we do it um, a little bit differently every week. Uh, for the last few weeks, um, I've mostly been presenting. So, well, me and my uh, co-officer, so we'll make presentations about certain topics and give them. Uh, but yeah, sometimes we have guest speakers, sometimes we have like full activities. In a few weeks, we're actually, few weeks, excuse me, we're actually mm -hmm. doing yoga for our meeting. We have a yoga instructor oh. coming. Yeah. So yeah, so you said that like mostly you focus on sexual health as your expertise. Yeah, personally, um, I find that I spend a lot of my meetings, my outreach time, times I'm speaking to students in classes, uh, focusing mostly on sexual health and also alcohol and drugs mm -hmm. a lot. Uh, but we cover, I mean, a really wide variety of things. We cover, obviously, just overall wellness, um, sexual health, drugs and alcohol, like I mentioned. But we also cover, like, stress management and then raising okay. awareness about mental health. What are the topics that students are mostly interested in when they're, whenever they come to Healthy Cats to talk to you? So I think it's a little bit of a mixture. Um, for our meetings, those are people who are usually like really interested in health. Mm -hmm. uh, something that's really cool about Healthy Cats is everyone is a really different major. So we do have a lot of like okay. pre-health, nursing, um, health promotion services type majors, but we also just have people who are in like random like psychology or political science and they're just like, I like health, like yeah. I like hearing about it. So those people definitely um, usually like more different things and we try mm -hmm. to do that, try to keep things kind of relative to what they might be thinking about at this time. So mm -hmm. uh, for example, we just had me on Tuesday and we covered it. Um, it was called preparing for finals and keeping your sanity, yeah. right? We're about a month out getting prepared. Um, and then we had a heart specialist come in in February on the 13th. We had heart health. Mm -hmm. covering it for Valentine's Day. And so, oh, yeah, okay. just kind of doing stuff like that um, yeah. in relation. Uh, back in November before Thanksgiving, we did a whole meeting about alternative diets and, like, mm -hmm. how you could do Thanksgiving if you're vegetarian or vegan. That's cool that you that, that you really try to make it practical, practical for people who want to come. Yeah. And, um, you know, like I was telling you earlier, like, that's why I was interested in having you on is because I think that, like, the, the topic of health itself is something that everybody can relate to on some level. But I want to talk about social health. Okay, and yeah. What, what, what that is, what that means, how it applies to so, campus life. So, yeah, of course. So, social health, um, we talk about just like all aspects of your social life. It's not your friends, your organizations, mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. And that's something that a lot of people don't always treat properly. And so we do find, you know, you should be involved in things, whether it is an organization, um, you know, service organization, a fraternity, sorority, mm -hmm. hide and seek club, like anything. Yeah. Just being involved does a lot for you, you know, having that connection. Ultimately, as humans, you know, we're social creatures. We like people. We like being with people, um, even if we don't always feel like it, because we have those days. But right, yeah, <laughs> overall, yeah. we do, you know, we need sex, or sorry, we need social interaction. Mm -hmm. um, and so having those connections can be really beneficial to us, but they can also be harmful, you know, when you're letting um, certain social aspects kind of take over your life. And so sometimes we find, you know, not in the organization area, but maybe just with your friends. Um, you know, a lot of us like going to the square, having a fun time on the weekend. That's all, you know, that's mm -hmm. all great. Uh, but when you're going to the square every night, yeah, yeah. you know, yeah, your, your wallet's <laughs> always on 10 cents. Like, yeah, for sure. Yeah. It's a balance. Yeah, yeah so it, it is a balance. It is important um, to take care of it, treat it like you don't want to just do exercise, school, and eat mm -hmm. right. I mean, you, you can't neglect that. Whole other side, yeah. yeah, so it's really about balance. I mean, in everything, we do need physical activity. You know, we are supposed to be getting like 30 mm -hmm. minutes of cardio most days. We need to. Um, but don't, you know, yeah. you don't need to be at the gym like eight hours. Like. Yeah, 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 for sure. Well, and I, and I think that's interesting because yeah. if, if a lot of what we're doing when we're young is figuring out, like, who, figuring out our identities and a lot of the ways yeah. that we, can figure that out is by looking at other people and how they how how we interact with them and how they respond to us. Mm -hmm. Seems to me that social health would have a lot to do with putting yourself out there so that you can 
you know. Yeah. Well, and another thing that we're doing at this age is that we are developing our habits that we are going to use in our lifetime. Mm -hmm. um, you know, this age is very crucial to us in our developmental stages. And so we see this a lot, especially with, you know, exercise and diet, because unfortunately, you know, our metabolism slowing down, right. all that good stuff's happening at this age. Yeah. Um, but if we don't take care of it now, the truth is we most likely won't. Right. Um, you know, the simple little physics law, mm -hmm. let's stay, or something yeah. in motion is going to stay in motion. Yeah. Uh, we're the same way. If we are active while we're young, we will most likely stay active into our older years. We'll most likely continue to eat right. But mm -hmm. if we're not eating right now, if we're not exercising now, if we're not, you know, taking care of our mental health, all those aspects, if we're not working towards it and improving it positively right mm -hmm. now, we most likely aren't going to. Yeah. It's a matter of like repetition and being mm -hmm. like, you know, being, uh, conscientious in the moment helps you be conscientious in the future and stuff like that yeah and it's like i've even started doing smaller stuff like just making sure that my house is clean all the time like yeah. every morning and do that kind of thing and you know yeah and routines are honestly amazing and we see this a lot uh especially when we talk about like sleep hygiene yeah. um which again is one of those things that a lot of people are like what is sleep hygiene yeah, I was gonna say. yeah so sleep hygiene um is about getting healthy sleep and getting like the best sleep you can. Mm -hmm. And so one of the biggest myths is that, you know, you can catch up on sleep. Like we've okay. all heard that, you know, like, yeah, oh, yeah. Saturday, I just caught up on sleep. I like slept <laughs> in. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but the truth is we actually can't catch up on sleep. Our bodies okay. can't do it. Is it, is it, is yeah. it because it's more of like a clock, more of like a clock thing, like an internal clock thing than it is just like yeah. a... You know, it's not like a battery recharging, it's just like a... Yeah, you know, without schedule. getting like too into it, um, mm -hmm. you know, we have like our different sleep cycles and like our REM cycle, which is really important for um, repairing like stuff in our bodies and also with our memory. It's kind of why pulling all-nighters is never helpful because without right. good sleep, you aren't going to remember the information that you cramped in your head. Mm -hmm. So another thing, never pulling all-nighters. Um, but yeah, so getting so a that, regular sleep schedule. Like, I, feel like I've heard, I feel like I've heard before, like if you sleep... Uh, like if you if you if you if you're studying and mm -hmm. then you like you study fairly hard and then you go to sleep immediately after to, it helps with your recall time your ability to remember. I mean, theoretically, I would say it would if you're getting a full sleep cycle in. Mm -hmm. But I mean, a 20 but, minute nap isn't gonna yeah, do it. No, no, yeah, no, like right before the test, set aside 20 minutes. To yeah, no, I yeah. I mean it varies on the person. Um, I'm not sure exactly. I want to say. Mm -hmm. I think it's like 90-ish minutes for a full sleep cycle. Okay. Um, but I mean, that's fully asleep, so that's not counting the time it takes you to fall asleep or if you get woken up. Yeah, okay, there's like yeah. multiple stages to be able to get to that good, like 90 minutes is what you're saying? Yes, yeah, so, um, and it all has to do with like our brain waves and then relaxing. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so making sure that we are, you know, going to bed at the same time every night and getting up at the same time every day. Uh, but part of what plays into that going to bed at the same time every night is having a regular routine for preparing ourselves for bed. Mm -hmm. And so something I'm sure we all do pretty frequently is like lay in our bed and scroll. Yeah. I am always scrolling and it's probably the number one habit I'm yeah. trying to break right now. It's hard to put it down, whenever you've been, if you, especially if you've been like relaxing at the end of the night yeah. and you're like watching some TV and like flipping through your phone, it's easy to yeah. continue. Yeah, so what we find is that I mean, our brains are incredible, and they are able of doing these really strong associations with things. And so there are two, there's only two things that you want to use your bed for, mm -hmm. and that is sleep and sex. Mm -hmm. And anything else does not need to occur in your bed. Mm -hmm. So that includes your scrolling, and that especially inclu includes studying. And that's another thing that I think a lot of us as college students do is, you know, we lay in bed with our, like, yeah. papers in front of us just trying to cram information into our head. Um, but what happens then is our body and our brain start to associate our bed with scrolling or right. with studying. And so it's not just a place to sleep. It's a place yeah. to, you know, it's like a, it's like a coffee table. Or something yeah. Well, and that's where you get, I'm sure you've had where you've laid down some nights and you're just like, oh, mm -hmm. I have to do this tomorrow and this, and you can't quiet your mind yeah. down. So the best thing is to prepare yourself um, for sleeping earlier on in the night. So make sure you're not taking in caffeine too late or using nicotine. Um, Although we want to get exercise, not exercising too close to your bedtime because you don't want to, you know, yeah, kind of wake your body. Your, all yeah. Your mental stuff. Yeah, it'll kind of like wake stuff. you up, get you energized. Exercising in the morning is amazing for that reason if you can get up in the morning and make it. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, and also just like, you know, settling down, like turning down the lights so our melatonin can start producing our body, getting us sleepy. Mm -hmm. And it can be anything, you know, it can just be like, washing the dishes, it can be listening to music, it can be yeah. reading a book for a just few minutes. Just to build association so that whenever you're yeah. like ready to go to sleep, you can go to sleep. Yeah. So yeah, just kind of wind down for 20, 30 minutes, and then when you lay down, you'll go mm -hmm. to sleep. I wonder how you feel about, uh, I guess it would mostly be mental health and, mm -hmm. and social media and the way that we use electronics. 
Do you think that that's a, that, what specifically? That, I mean, just, do you think that we have like an a, like an unhealthy fixation on the amount of the amount of oh, media that we expose ourselves of to? Of course. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think I don't know. I feel like at this stage, if you don't, mm-hmm. like the, you're lying to yourself. Yeah. Like you have to be. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I I wish like we could tally like exactly like how much, which I guess we can actually. Yeah. Um. I mean, I get like sometimes. How much time that we spend using it. Yeah. I. I mean, I, I've done this. I'm sure others have. You know, you feel like you have this much time in the evening, mm-hmm. and you're like, oh, I'm gonna do all these things, and then you sit down to do them, and you're like. Oh, yeah. What what happened? But when you really think about it, it's like, well, I spent an hour, you know, scrolling Instagram, and I mm-hmm. spent thirty minutes on Snapchat. Sure. And I, there are a million hobbies that I'd like to have that you know I end up just like. And social media like gets in the way. Uh, you know. So yeah. So like we already we already talked about how uh, con- consent is uh, consent is inherent in in, in in the sexual experience. It's, it's part yes. of it. And it's necessary. It's, yeah, required. And uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, and then so. Sexual safety on campus and consent is what we need to talk about. Sorry. Okay. I was trying to yeah. hold into there, but lost my track a little bit. Yeah. Um, I will admit that this is an area I am still personally working on. Um, we have a partner organization called MAV. It stands for Men Against Violence. It is open right. to everyone regardless of their gender identity, and they focus very heavily on this topic and on sexual assault prevention. Um, and so... Yeah. yeah. So they are definitely the specialists to speak to about it. Um, but yeah, I mean, ultimately, it's kind of like, you know, we talked about that sex is, it's a natural thing. And, you know, it's supposed to be an enjoyable thing. And ultimately, if both partners aren't feeling that, then you're not really having sex. Right. Yeah. And that's the big thing of making sure that both people are truly wanting to. They're not feeling forced to or pressure. Mm-hmm. They're like doing it because they're fearful of what might happen if they don't. And so, of course, that's always the first thing that we want to address before yeah, that's we step, progress that's any further. One, yeah. Well, yeah. Like, with the, like the demonstrations you're talking about is like the first thing is, is communication. Is yeah. That, is like, you know, know, having everybody on the same page. Yeah. And exactly, um, you know, kind of why we talked about like, you know, there's no real like right time. Like it's all for mm-hmm. the person. And so, yeah, there's no need to have that condom unless you know both parties are both willing and ready to participate. Mm-hmm. And, you know, recognizing that getting no isn't really a bad thing like getting the answer no No. doesn't necessarily mean something bad but like you can say no for a lot of reasons obviously like you can say no if you just aren't comfortable or you know just ultimately don't want to like if you just don't want to of course but you can say no if you don't know that person that well like if you don't know their sexual history you don't know if they've been tested you don't know how many partners they've had what protection they've used any reason that you don't feel like having sex is Mm -hmm. a justifiable reason so so part of of sexual safety is being um, is having good having good communication, letting people know, oh, of course, you know what, yeah. what, what's okay, what isn't, how how you're feeling to yeah. you know, make the situation better. Well, and even um, I mean that doesn't stop once sex begins. I mean consent right. is ongoing and continual through the whole experience, and so that's why you know at any point in a sexual interaction, one party can choose to not engage in a certain activity or can choose to stop. The interaction, mm-hmm. right. um, yeah, which goes into that. Okay, um, what do you think? What do you think? Student, do you think that students are generally safe, se- se- like sexually safe? Whenever, like, they're, you know, walking walking through campus, we have like the blue, the big like blue buttons and stuff mm-hmm. like that. And then I think that there was talk of, from some of the like president body, uh, pre- the candidates about increasing the number of those and, and, hmm. and things like that. Do you think that people are uh, as aware of the, as they should be about that? I'm not. I'm yeah. not a woman, so I don't know how it really feels to be on campus or around San Marcos at night and how you would feel things like that. Yeah. Um, well. Okay. So I'm just gonna kind of go through a few things. Um, so the first thing is just that I want to address that ultimately, like sexual assault is an issue for people of all genders, um, not just women. Right. Sure. Um, but yeah. No, I get what you're saying. Um, but it is. It affects people of all gender identities. Mm -hmm. Um, And yeah, so Texas State has those blue boxes, which I believe like if you pick up, it's like immediately connects you to UPD. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, yeah, those are great and all, but ultimately, statistically speaking, you're more likely to be assaulted by somebody you know and somebody close to you. And it's one of those really sad things, but the reality is most people who do experience a sexual assault, it's someone that they trust. It's a partner or a friend or right. you know someone they know, someone they have a connection mm-hmm. with. So personally to me, I don't see the blue boxes really improving yeah. that. I don't think having more of them present. 
I also feel like at this point, I mean, pretty much everyone has a cell phone. I think those boxes were right. put on like yeah. back in the 90s uh -huh. when yeah, people like, did it. If you don't it. have time to run to your home phone, you can run to the Yeah. Phone so, I mean, yeah. ultimately anything that can make the campus safer, of mm -hmm. course. As a female, I do not like sure. walking on this yeah. campus at night, and I don't. They do more like, help than they do yeah. harm. But. Yeah, and I mean, I was an RA here for a few years, so I lived on campus a lot of years, and I didn't, like, I didn't walk through campus at night. I would wait the 20 mm -hmm. minutes for the Bobcat Bobby if I had sure. to, or, like, the walking escort. Yeah, well, I think that yeah. a lot of people don't know about that either. About, oh, yeah? About how they're, how they're uh, the, uh, well, there's, I think that there's, like, a private, there's, like, there's a security, like, team that's not affiliated with University Police Department, and then the University Police oh, Department also there? has, like, Bobcat Bobbies, or maybe it's... Oh. The only one I'm familiar uh, with is Bobcat Bobbies. I might, I might be wrong, but I mean, I, mean, I, just, know, I just know that there I are like ferry, ferry services for people who yeah. go across campus. Yeah, so Bobcat Bobbies, if you're not familiar with it, um, I don't have the number on me, but you can definitely mm -hmm. find it online. Just type in Bobcat Bobbies. Um, yeah. yeah, I think it comes through the UPD. Uh, so yeah, you can call them, and you have to be in a group, though, of, I believe, two or fewer. Okay, yeah, or is yeah. it three or fewer? I think it's I'm two not, or I'm fewer. I'm not sure, but that, but that okay. makes sense if you're with a larger group of people. Yeah. Then they want to reserve their resources for... Exactly, because they only have so many, but they do run. Um, they run until really early. I think technically they end at like mid, like at one or like two a.m. But I personally mm -hmm. have known some of the employees that like choose to stay later. Yeah. Just because they're like, I'm here. Like people like need it. Be, I feel like they might even stop at like three. Really? Something. Yeah. Sure. It's it's been a while since I've used them, so I'm not totally sure on the specifics, mm -hmm. but. Yeah, so two or fewer. Um, I think more than that, they consider walking safe. But two or fewer, they'll pick you up. Uh, but the important note is that it's not always a bobby. It's not always the little golf cart thing. Sometimes yeah. it's a walking escort. So okay, sometimes yeah. people call them and they're like, oh, we no. don't, oh, we don't want, want you they now. Just want to ride. Yeah, they just want to ride like <laughs> yeah, out yeah. to wherever they live. Yeah, and I, th and I think that also, uh, like, Ooh, excuse me. No, you're sorry. Good. Uh, like being sexually safe also has to do with being responsible when you go out and go out to places like the square. And knowing, you know, where you where you are, who you're with, what you're consuming, that kind of thing. Um, well, do you just mean like, se are we talking about sexual assault? Or are we talking about like sexual Just sexual health safety, or... just like knowing what, I'm not sure what yeah. talking about. I'm well, sure I mean, okay, so I will say like, okay, ultimate, I mean, when it comes to sexual health, um, you're right. Like a lot of that falls on us for our responsibility, like. I always tell, even if you're female, like, you need to be carrying condoms. Like, if there's mm -hmm. a chance you sure. could have sex, you need to have condoms. Uh, similar with birth control. If you are a sexually active person with a uterus, um, you have, like, an 85% mm -hmm. chance of becoming pregnant in a year if you're not using any form wow. of protection. that's really high. Okay, right? That's a that's yeah, a that's gamble. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, not I, in your I, I favor. Put money on that bet. Yeah. I would not. <laughs> and what we see is, um, you know, like, the average woman, I think, the national average is like women want two kids mm -hmm. and statistically women spend about three years trying to get pregnant like having those two kids you know having the first one right. being postpartum having the second but women spend like three decades trying to prevent unwanted pregnancy yeah. so i'm like get on birth control <laughs> and yeah. the student health center again like they have almost every type you can get there and it's yeah, excellent there are options but yeah so yeah if you are going to be sexually active you know, getting tested, the Student Health Center does STI testing. They actually do free HIV testing as well. You can, okay. like, call ahead and just walk in. It's a small finger prick, super easy. Um, yeah, you can get your condoms, you can get birth control, being prepared. Um, but in regards to, I mean, like, culturally, ultimately, like, you can only prepare yourself so much for sure. consensual sex. Um, at the end of the day, anything beyond that isn't... Mm -hmm doesn't fall on the responsibility of the individual, it falls on the responsibility of the perpetrator. Right. And so with that, just where I'll leave it with there. Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I just want to, you know, be For clear sure. that that's never, whether it's alcohol or the square, like it's always on the perpetrator. Oh, no, 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 no. I, mean, I just mean like if you, like you said, like you, you, you cover, cover, oh, yeah. cover your bases and then like beyond that what other people do isn't your responsibility. Yeah. But I mean, ma 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 maintaining yourself you know, yeah, is well, helpful. Yeah, well, and of course, like when we were kind of talking about, you know, how the like fear sex education classes. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I feel like with education and making this more open, making this a more commonly talked about topic, uh, you know, people are gonna know about these resources more and know about how to take care of themselves. You know, God forbid, mm -hmm. like something terrible happens. No, like, do you know who to call and like where to go? Like, where can you get tested? Where can you get certain medications? Right. Um, I mean, you can be extremely responsible and just 
not used your condom correctly in the moment. You know, right. something can happen. Um, do you know where to get that morning after pill? Like just knowing those resources mm -hmm. and knowing Maybe how to get to them. And ultimately making it socially acceptable for people to reach out to them. Right, yeah. I mean, which I think is a, which yeah. I think is like a like a uh, like a subset of what we were talking about about how they the the edu the sexual education process isn't as uh, thorough as it should be. People are less yeah. comfortable ta having the discussion about it because they weren't exposed they haven't been exposed to it. Maybe yeah, they should. and I think a lot of it, especially with like the high school age, um, you know, we have this. We kind of get it. Adults don't want high schoolers running around having sex. Mm -hmm. um, but at the same time, like, that's really a period of our time that we are becoming, like, we're coming into our sexuality. We're beginning to understand it. And when you take this age group that's just now discovering who they are, discovering mm -hmm. their own sexuality, discovering what makes their body feel good, and you make it shameful. You and you it make it only negativity. You give it only negativity. Yeah. Like, it makes people... You know, they become adults and they don't know how... So it's for a lifelong, yeah. a lifelong association with... Well, and those urges people. ultimately don't go away. Like, they sure. don't go away when you yeah. get to your 20s. It's you just don't in. know how yeah. to care, care for them. Yeah. Um, but you might have noticed during this interview, we only say um, STIs, sexually transmitted infections. Mm -hmm. um, that's something with healthy cats. We actually never say sexually transmitted disease. Mm -hmm. uh, they mean the same thing, but right. disease sounds terrible. It sounds yeah. scary and like... It's yeah, going to yeah. kill so, you yeah. a slow, yeah, yeah like you know, genital warts yeah. for an hour in yeah. high school. Whereas, whereas an infection is like a, is, is like a, yeah. like a temporary, uh, yeah. Yeah, and if you look, I mean, at all the infections, I mean, even HIV, like, not only are there preventable measures to take to keep yourself from contracting an infection, but pretty much every infection has either a treatment or a cure. Mm -hmm. And I... It's a little sad because, yeah, especially with HIV, even now, people still have a really bad stigma about it. But, you know, we have things like PrEP that prevent the transmission of it. And there's so many HIV treatments out there that we're finding more and more people, if they're getting tested early enough and getting treated, they're actually not progressing into AIDS and they're living full yeah. lives, regular sex lives. Like, none of these infections or anything really have an impact on your sex life yeah. or your quality of life if you're just you know, maintaining your health, plus mm -hmm. getting tested regularly, treating what comes up. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. So uh, let's talk about, uh, did you, is, there, is there a particular like moment or a story that came out of working with Healthy Cats where it, 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 it affected a student in a way that you remember? I got to think for a moment. Mm -hmm. That's good. Um, mm, like, maybe like somebody coming into the, maybe... Somebody coming into the organization really having something that they were interested in, something they wanted to know about, and then through yeah. through, through 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 coming and working um, with you guys. I see. I don't know. I feel like for me, there's not really just there's not one big moment for me. It's kind of like a lot of little moments. Mm -hmm. um, the thing that most commonly happens that really rewards me is that, especially with like our sex slides and chocolate presentation, when we start presenting it, people are always. They're very uncomfortable, very, very awkward, mm -hmm. which reasonably so. Like, usually you have like 17, 18 year olds, yeah. um, and we're talking about penises and vaginas, and right, I'm yeah. demonstrating all these great things. Mm -hmm. So, natural to be awkward. And I just love that usually when we get to the end of that presentation, like everybody is laughing and openly asking questions and is like coming up and staying with me after. And that's really been the best is having those conversations when the presentation's in. Those students who stay or who come to our tables. Um, and speak to me about like specific questions they're having. Right. That maybe and, they, wouldn't have, they wouldn't have been willing to ask about before. Yeah, and I think that's just the greatest thing about Healthy Cats is that we're peer educators. Like, I'm mm -hmm. a student here. Right. I'm in classes. It's, I'm, not, it's not somebody coming and telling you, like, yeah. hey, this is how this is. This is what this is. It's like, hey, we're, yeah. we're, all, we're all doing this thing. We should talk about it, right? And I think you're more likely to bring your questions to someone like me than rather, you know, make an appointment right. to ask the doctor or, like, Hopefully you're asking us and not asking like your friends. Because mm -hmm. um, yeah. that's the thing is we go through a lot of training. We make sure the information we're giving is medically accurate and okay. current for students. Um, but yeah, I think, I don't know. I, yeah, just a few little things. I, I remember pretty clearly one of the first presentations I gave, there was like a guy who stayed after and was just like, I don't know why you do this. And I'm like, uh -huh. well, like, what does that mean? And he's like, like, why? Like, why do you choose to spend 15 hours a week talking about sex? Yeah. And I'm like, I just, like, genuinely love health. Mm -hmm. um, like, I've always been interested in health, and I feel like, especially, yeah, being a student here, being an RA, 
just you know being around like I've seen the negative and positive impacts that sex ed has right. had on our community and I just love talking to people and I love at the end of those presentations when you get people who are like now they're willing to ask you those questions and be open mm -hmm. about specifics like they want to know Sometimes you get personal questions. Sometimes it's people want to. That's kind of a weird thing for so somebody weird. to ask you, though, is to be like, so why, though? I mean, I know, that's kind of strange. it's just for them, like, they've never experienced someone talking about mm -hmm. sex openly and in a shame free environment. Like, they've never witnessed that. Yeah. And so that's just what I love is getting people to that comfort stage. And of course, we have a lot of members who actually joined us through being in our presentations. I met them in presentations, mm -hmm. and they come that week, and you're like, I'm so glad to see you here. Yeah. And yeah. yeah, and it's it's great to see people grow and see their love for health grow. One of the things I wanted to touch on was finals, like how to prep. How did it, I, we talked Ooh, about that a okay, little bit yeah. earlier about like study breaks and yeah. that kind of that kind of okay. things. Um, yeah. Well, first and foremost, it's important to just get prepared, get mm -hmm. you know a plan in motion. And so the first thing you want to do is you do want to get informed. So Texas State, we do kind of a different final schedule, you know, it's not always at the same time, the same day, or even in the same classroom. So making sure that you are going to be yeah. <laughs> at your final, yeah. um, right? Yeah. And you want to know what, like, you want to know the format. Is it essay, multiple choice, all that stuff? Um, knowing what's covering, like, what's covered on it. Is it cumulative? Is it just over the last four chapters? Mm -hmm. And that's kind of your starting ground. And then from there, I always recommend, um, I always recommend making an Excel sheet with your schedule because I think just visually seeing how much time you have is really helpful and figuring out like where you are going to set blocks. Mm -hmm. And I fully believe that like actually setting those blocks, writing them in is going to make you stick right. to them better than just... The organization is a... Yeah. Okay. This one's done. I'm still filming this one. Okay. We can, we can, we can continue on that yeah. one. Yeah. Yeah. Fine. Yeah. Um, rather than just like, when mm -hmm. I get home, I'm going to do these things. And right. so, yeah, so once you have those times set, uh, the next thing that's really great is to actually set a goal for your study time. So mm -hmm. yeah, we talked about breaks, you know, making right. sure you are giving yourself breaks. Um, but it's not just about like, yeah, get it, yeah it's, not, it's not just about having, like, having an amount of time that you have studied, it's about getting an amount of work done, right? Yeah, so it's about, yeah, being, having effective study time. Right. So, right, are you really spending 25 minutes or studying are or are you? Playing on your, yeah. yeah, so making sure we are dedicating like specific time to it. Um, and setting a goal, I think, is really important when you mm -hmm. begin. You know, remember like smart goals from middle school, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, oh, it was goals? like, oh, shit, I'm not going to remember the whole acronym. <laughs> Back it up, we're not yeah. going to say it. Okay. okay. Oh, yeah. well, smart, okay, with smart goals, it's like an acronym, but one of the things is that it's measurable and it's attainable. And so, okay. for example, like in your 25 minutes, you might be like, in these 25 minutes, I'm going to have an outline done for my essay. Mm -hmm. Or in these 25 minutes, I'm going to get through these 15 flashcards. Yeah. So having a goal for yourself, um, you are more likely to achieve it than just saying, I'm going to study gonna for the next. Yeah. yeah, so making sure it's specific there. And yeah, you know, giving yourself those breaks, like make sure you are still eating right, still mm -hmm. sleeping, keeping up with your sleep hygiene. Um, stress, unfortunately, plays just wreaks habit on our whole body and our whole yeah. system. You might notice people get really, really sick during finals. Mm -hmm. uh, stress actually has the ability to lower our immune system's effectiveness, okay, yeah. right? I feel like I've heard some stuff about like it's something with like cortisol or something like that. that yeah. Messes up your but I don't know the specifics, it doesn't matter. Yeah, but, but yeah, so if you start, so ideally, I know it's hard, but like if you start now and you get in that routine, it's just routine, mm -hmm. you have to make it a habit. Right, yeah, and that, yeah, and I think that that's the thing too, is like prepping for finals isn't just something that you do on the week of finals, it's something that you do throughout the semester yeah. so that you're not cramming in four yeah. chapters worth of material, or I mean, you're cramming it, you're studying all of the material, yeah. but you're not cramming in the understanding of sections of the entire course at one time. You've done it throughout. Yeah, and I'm sure if you are, you know, a, if you are a seasoned student here, mm -hmm. you know that once you get past that first year or two, really it's not enough to just like know the stuff. Like you have to really understand the stuff. And that takes a lot of time like with your material, like really not only like being able to recite it, but mm -hmm. being able to understand how it applies to what right. you're learning and like why you need to learn it. And so, yeah. Um, and I definitely feel like I can yeah. tell when I go from the level of like trying to understand something, knowing why this, knowing, knowing that, this, that something works away, yeah. and then knowing like why, like the bigger yeah. concept of understanding. Well, and that feeling right there, like is honestly, I feel it to me as a student is one of the most rewarding things mm -hmm. I have. You, you know, you're like on that grind and you're spending hours mm -hmm. and then like it clicks and you're like, oh, I can do this now. I can do this yeah. now. And so I always tell people like, that's so rewarding. Like you're never gonna mm -hmm. feel bad after studying, but like 
you're going to feel bad for not studying, you know? Yeah, yeah, for sure. So, yeah, just get to it. It's not it's not the most enjoyable thing, but if you do it now, you are going to thank yourself in a month, and so... It's really enjoyable to have decent grades to get done with your classes. You don't have to take it again. Don't have to retake them. Uh, don't got to be no. here in the summer. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, the summer classes are harsh. I think it's like every day for like, a, for like an hour and a half or something yeah. like that. Like, if that's not a good enough reason to study for, for finals correctly. Oh, I don't yeah. know I'm a science major, so we always have labs. So mm -hmm. the summer classes I've been in, yeah, every single day, hour and a half, and then lab uh, twice a week for whoa. four hours. Yeah, no fun. No, not great, but... You gotta do what you gotta do. You gotta do it. Okay, cool. Well, I appreciate you coming and talking to yeah, me. Yeah, thank you it for having fun. me. Yeah, yeah I have a lot of fun. Maybe we'll have you back on. Do uh, it again sometime. Some <laughs> yeah, for sure. Why not? Right. Okay. All right. Hope you like that. Uh, Kayla's here. Thanks to her for stopping by. Um, stay tuned for next time. We're going to have uh, John Garcia, uh, the former Chief Justice of the Student Government Supreme Court, come in. So that's a bit of a mouthful, but it should be an exciting talk. Uh, look out for it next Thursday. Uh, and again, thanks for listening. All right.